leave each day, live each day, so that you are more prepared to meet your maker. Travis Wayne Goodsell. <clears throat> the clerks of the court just outright failed to put my uh, submission of brief on the docket yesterday. They're just outright refusing now. I've caught them cheating, committing crimes for the church, and now they're trying to cover it up by just outright refusing to respond anymore. So this video is going to hit hard for you. <clears throat> I've already done the video segments. I'm trying to figure out how to, which order to put them in so that I can stop talking here and then proceed. <clears throat> so yeah, let's start and we'll put uh, Johan Adam Weissop's thing up first. Alright, this is the Wikipedia page for the Illuminati. <clears throat> and there's uh, Johan Adam Weissop. Organized on 1st of May, 1776. This needs to be understood, Mormons. When was the Nauvoo Temple dedicated? When was the very first inverted pentagram instituted in the church? On the Nauvoo Temple, after Joseph Smith was assassinated. Dedicated 1st of May, 1776. What is also interesting is that in their order, the candidates for their secret society were given secret signs and a password. Huh. That's in the Book of Mormon, isn't it? In Helaman, Chapter 6. What's also of note, that it was composed of Christians of good character. They were actively sought. Whereas Jews, pagans, were excluded, specifically excluded, as it says here. Women were excluded, monks were excluded, and members of other secret societies excluded. And the candidates had to be rich. Docile. <laughs> My dulcet darling, <laughs> I would not say such things if I were you. Uh, Princess Bride. And so the thing that they're not covering here is that as the Illuminati, the enlightened ones, as it is defined, it is corresponding with Lucifer, which means light bearer. As one who is illuminated, you are a light bearer, enlightened bearer of light. <clears throat> and therefore, Lucifer and his secret sign and password were used by this Illuminati. So why this isn't in here, I don't fully understand. Travis Wayne Goodsell. I'm here at Google Maps. Here's Temple Square. You can see it over here. Let's 
highlight it for you in case you can't see the cursor. Uh, alrighty, so where we're headed to is right here on State Street. Right there at the corner. We food around the corner. Alrighty, see there's the the light. That's what we're looking for. And we're gonna turn it into a 3D map. And <clears throat> get closer. Come on. See, there it is. This is State Street. This can't be gaslighted. Everybody can see this. Everybody has seen it. There's Temple Square, the Beehive House, Lion House, the Administration Building, the Church Office Building, <coughs> the Joseph Smith Memorial Building. There's the Capitol Building right in the background, which is straight under this keystone that was designed and built well uh, the original was designed and built by Don Carlos Young the son of Brigham Young every prophet of the church president of the church has this upper penthouse in this uh, northern corner northwestern corner and so yeah, that's as close as they let us go to the, the symbol here. But there it is, right there. Inverted pentagram, pointing down. This cannot be gaslighted. This cannot be altered. This is what it is. It's an inverted pentagram on an obelisk pointing down. Obelisks are supposed to point up. This one's pointing down because the star is pointing down as an inverted pentagram with a beehive and then an eagle on top. Yes, yes, I'm Mormon. <clears throat> and yes, sealed in room number 13 in the Salt Lake Temple. The church and the inverted pentagram are facts. We can't be lied to that it doesn't exist, that it's a fake news, that it's a hoax. I've been to Salt Lake City, been to Temple Square, I've seen the inverted pentagram. Z, plural. Nobody can tell me that the symbol of Lucifer is not interconnected with the church. But this is where the church turns evil on us. I'm listening to Star Trek Discovery at the same time here. <clears throat> We're at 5.30 in the morning. I've got things to get done today. There's a thing called brainwashing. We all know about brainwashing, whether you fully understand it or not. The church does. They know it very well and have been using it on us Mormons. The technique that they use is a dichotomous categorization of brainwashing. I should have brought up the scripture first. 
First Nephi, chapter 14. This is Nephi's dream of his father's dream. And in verse 10, And he said unto me, Behold, there are saved two churches only. There is the church of the Lamb of God, and the other is the church of the devil. Whoso belongeth not to the church of the Lamb of God, belongeth to that great church which is the mother of abominations. He would already gone over the great abominable church. That's what he's referring to here. And she is the whore of all the earth. That is metaphoric. Church is not an actual woman. It's a, you know, metaphor. <coughs> and the church uses this and turns it into a fallacious argument because obviously there aren't two churches but he's trying to help people understand that those churches that do exist you're either following the one true God or you're not you're following another God that you create and this is the dichotomous brainwashing that the church uses. Uh, should I get to... No, we'll hold off on that. <clears throat> oh. The one officer who has the implant in her skull, uh, if you've not been following the show, uh, she had a a previous accident which then caused the addition but then for this season at the end of last season there was a uh, an attack which resulted in her having uh, re-injured herself and now she's freaking out and we get into that here when we talk about psychology because brainwashing is a part of psychology. This dichotomous use by the church is that they say that, hey, you're either for the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints or you're against it. And they make Mormons believe that they are the Church of the Lamb. And therefore, if you're against them, you're the church of the devil. See how they've turned it around? What they refuse to accept is that they are not the church of Joseph Smith. Though Nelson has come out and confessed it. Ah, let's stop it right here and put in that little clip. This is not the church of Joseph Smith. The current church has mythologized Joseph Smith. They've altered his documents. They've altered his life. So that we as Mormons grow up misinformed, deceived about Joseph Smith. And this current church uses that incorrect information about Joseph Smith to control us with this dichotomous brainwashing. That if we turn against the current church, we're turning against Joseph Smith, whom they've mythologized. And so when we wake up to the reality of the horror that the church is. Lucifer. The church then tries to attack us with guilt trips, shunning, abuse, physical abuse, uh, torture, all sorts of different methods because they 
have brainwashed Mormons into this dichotomous thinking that they are the only true church, and therefore everybody else are the church of the devil. Everybody who leaves the church are of the devil. This is how severe the brainwashing is. This is how I lost Karen. <clears throat> this categorization of from psychology uh, is from the Mormon Stanley Smith Stevens. He's dead, so it's the late Stanley Smith Stevens. But he's the one that created the categorization system, though this technique has been used throughout time. Divide and conquer in the art of war that was had in there. And you can see it in our election. How many options do we have for president? Only two. Yes, there were other people, Kanye West, for example, <coughs> but he's not a legitimate option. That's, that's the brainwashing trap. And Trump uses it. He says, well, if, we, if you elect Biden, he's going to turn America socialist. And that triggers in his followers and in those who are brainwashed the concept of fear. Oh, oh God, we don't want socialism. We don't want to turn communist. Yes, you don't. <laughs> and he, this type of attack on human beings through psychology is a distraction. Because Trump is Nazi. Conservatives are Nazis. They're fascists. But they won't tell you that. They just tell you how bad the other party is. Likewise, the church. They won't tell you about the pentagram, inverted pentagrams. No. They'll tell you that they are one and the same with Joseph Smith. And so if you turn on the church, you're turning on Joseph Smith, you're turning on the Book of Mormon that they've altered. turning on polygamy, which they altered and added, etc, etc, etc. This is also what's called gaslighting. I showed you the facts. The symbol of Lucifer was used by the Illuminati and that symbol is used by the current church with Brigham Young. And the current church is trying to gaslight us as they are trying to gaslight me in my lawsuit against the church. And it's such a... I've hit them so hard with this that now they're refusing to file anything now. They didn't put it on the docket from yesterday, the brief that I submitted. I've got the email. They can't come back later and say, oh, well, we never received it, Travis. No, you responded. <laughs> you can't gaslight me. but they still do it. This is what psychology does. They keep pushing over and over and over. You're mentally ill. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You're mentally ill. And we can prove it because you say you're not. All those who are mentally ill say they're not mentally ill. 
That's a fallacious argument, by the way. But that's that's all part of brainwashing, gaslighting, this dichotomous, non-dichotomous categorization. It's all fallacious. That's why psychology and all of its various fields, therapy, counseling, uh, psychiatry for drugging, it's all called a pseudoscience. It's not a legitimate science. It's fake. Legitimately fake science. And you can see how dominant it has become in American culture. Utah, it's given prominent position and status. It's in the law. And laws are designed around them controlling the courts and the court processes when called upon. They are our American indefinite detention camps. It's our Guantanamo on American soil. And if you've been paying attention to the Trump presidency, you know, all those psychiatrists or psychologists who came out and wrote a book saying Trump is mentally ill, he's unfit for office, they're the ones who got played. The church, likewise, has played psychologists. Get to that in a minute. But during this election, psychologists were drooling. Pavlov dog. <laughs> Pavlov's dogs. Because they saw in this election, during a viral pandemic, which they've also been drooling over, they've been... Oh, it's almost over. The symbiote has been born. And everybody's all standing around smiling. <laughs> That's something that doesn't exist. see the metaphoric connections to a single woman who's got a baby and the culture says oh it's forbidden <laughs> she has to give up her baby she can't be among us <laughs> she's forbidden <laughs> yes I see the connections but uh, they've been getting people on coronavirus for depression or the election, election anxiety. They created a new mental illness for our 2020 election. This is how evil psychology is. This is how evil this brainwashing that Stanley Smith Stevens dichotomized, created, organized. Uh, Non-dichotomous is the uh, subsection groups, subcategories of a dichotomous. So, for uh, uh, Democrats, you have progressives, and then they even have left-wing, right-wing, and moderate within both parties. This is that sub non dichotomous categorization. But the, the pseudo part of it, the fake part of it, is that when it's an external cause, because psychology never looks for a cause. They are all about the outward symptoms and symptom management. That's why all, all the drugs on TV commercials for bipolar disorder or some other mental uh, condition, mental illness, which doesn't exist. There is no such thing as a mental illness. their whole point and purpose is to 
deceive you, to tell you over and over and over again, repetitively, just as they've been doing with this election and during the coronavirus, you guys have a mental illness. You have a mental illness. You have a mental illness. You have election anxiety. You have election anxiety. But these are outer causal conditions. They are not internal, which is what true mental illness is supposed to be so that we can actually go into the brain to find the physical ailment whether it be that there are snapped synapses wires or whatever uh, in our uh, brain or whether there's damage to part of the brain or whether there's an, a mal developed portion of the brain but if those were the case there's no need for psychology anyway you go to a neurologist somebody who can actually go into your brain ident identify and directly uh, treat the causation psychology is not about causation And, and that's what they refuse to tell you. It's a distraction because they focus on the outward symptoms that they take you away from saying, hey, where's the cause? What do you mean I have a mental illness? What do you mean I have 2020 election anxiety? Well, see, you're anxious. You're concerned about Trump, whether he's going to win or lose. They get both sides on this, don't they? Trump loyalists are also anxious. Oh no, Trump can't lose. Let's go kill people. No, stop. But this is the horror of brainwashing. And the church is using that. So that when you leave the church, they turn Mormons against you, try to guilt trip you into coming back to church. John DeLynn psychologist on his Wikipedia page it says he's considered and I heard the interview shame on you John but he got played as a psychologist by the church he says I, I might consider going back oops they got gotcha. you you're the psychologist in the pseudo fake science and yet the church got gotcha. you with their fake science usage. And so Holland is the one who first came out in conference acknowledging the existence of mental illness. And uh, that's the trap, is that they pretend to embrace psychology, but they control it. And by controlling it, they don't worry about it going after them, because they control it. In the case of John DeLynn, they got him. <coughs> and so, with this gaslighting, the church is now escalating it under Nelson. And it's because of their connection with Russia. But in April conference, if you remember, they talked about hinge pointing. And a hinge, so a, it connects two things together that go in different directions. The church outright admitted, and that's Nelson's clip there, this is not the church of Joseph Smith. And yes, in the context, he was saying that it's the church of Jesus Christ. <laughs> Again, the distraction, because it's not the church of Jesus Christ, this is the church of Lucifer. 
but as long as he can distract you by saying, oh, it's not Joseph's church, as they punish you, if you say, oh, Joseph Smith did all these horrible things, it's the church of Jesus. They trap you with this brainwashing, this gaslighting, this diversionary tactic of abuse. And, and with their hinge pointing, they created a brand new God. Because, pay attention, well, I'm not going to put in the clip, I'll put in the picture for you. He told us, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints is the cornerstone. And he put it in a cornerstone rectangle. And then he placed the idol god Christus on top of it. Said, this is your Jesus. But he placed it on top of the cornerstone. Jesus is supposed to be the cornerstone. But Nelson placed Jesus in an idol god form a statue on top of the cornerstone which he called the church and then put an arch over him said that had to do with him coming out of the tomb as a resurrected being not ascended because the reason why we as Mormons don't wear a cross is because we give the excuse that oh well we believe he's a living God. He's ascended to heaven. But Nelson didn't ascend him. Kept him as just resurrected. So, that, that should have horrified Mormons. I was horrified. I couldn't believe it. I was telling Karen prior to that conference, joking with her, what if Nelson had Lucifer appear next to him at the pulpit of conference? Would you leave the church then? And she just laughed it off, oh, that would never happen. And then he did it. <laughs> he did it. I couldn't believe it. So I'll let's show you the picture. Nelson came out in conference and presented a hinge pointing idol god for Mormons. During a viral pandemic, when Mormons were already being tortured with the virus, as they distract Mormons, because in April conference, we were shut down here in Utah. But Nelson came out and held a second fast, because the first one apparently didn't work. He held a second fast, which Mormons have to pay money for, to the church. It's supposed to go for the poor and the needy. I've gone over the percentage of how much they actually give to the poor. Even though he wants to claim, oh, we've given two billion through LDS charities. What about our fast offerings? Why are there still poor and homeless here in Utah? <clears throat> if you're able to acquire two billion through donations, not using the church's money.
this fast was to cure coronavirus. As a scientific medical doctor, a hard science, though I'm concerned of the direction it's going in with the pharmaceutical companies extorting doctors to experiment with drugs on their patients. Nonetheless, the medical profession is a legitimate science. It's the individual doctors who violate their Hippocratic Oath and do harm by using humans as guinea pigs for pharmaceutical companies. <clears throat> and yet, despite his, Nelson's being a medical doctor, a heart surgeon, was granted apostleship for saving the life of of uh, Kimball, Spencer W. Kimball. He just threw it all away. And I've got that clip. And uh, after I show you the clip, I'll then show you his brainwashing that he used in, in this last conference in October as he botched massively got humiliated and destroyed with his failure to properly define a softball question the meaning of the name Israel so I'll, I'll show you that clip that came from the church's own website. As a physician and surgeon, I have great admiration for medical professionals, scientists, and all who are working around the clock to curb the spread of COVID-19. I am also a man of faith. new normal that's been all over the news and Nelson took it and ran with it also see the news keeps trying to brainwash me into accusing me of normalizing Trump's behavior I've not been normalizing Trump's behavior I'm well aware of how evil he is what are you trying to do, MSNBC? Don't tell me I'm normalizing. But that's their brainwashing tactic that the news is even using. It's not just an MSNBC. Other stations are also doing it too. They repeat over and over again that I'm doing something wrong, that I need to change. I'm not normalizing. Yes, you are. Quit normalizing it. I'm not normal yet. Yes, you are. And in so doing, they want me to normalize their attacks on me, accusing me of normalizing. That's the evil of psychology. And Nelson has now pulled it. But Nelson doesn't need to keep repeating it. He's already brainwashed Mormons. And so he just has to throw it out there. New normal. This is our new normal. And all Mormons say, yes, it's our new normal. Yeah. We thank thee, O God, for a prophet to lead us and guide us in these latter days. Yeah. So the April conference, he's hinge pointing with his idol God that he presented in conference. And then in this one, he says, this hinge pointing that I've taken you on is now the new normal. He says, I've brainwashed you. And I'm telling you, just like the villains do in all the shows, revealing their secret plot to the hero. <laughs> and Mormons all miss it. 
That's how well he has brainwashed Mormons, how the church has brainwashed Mormons. That he has openly confessed to having brainwashed Mormons and is taking them down a dark, forbidden path. Remember, he's also the one who started out with covenant path. Where do Mormons make covenants? In the temple endowment ceremony. Don't stop at temple. The temple endowment ceremony. And again, Brigham Young created it. He wrote it. He directed it. I don't think he started it. I'm more concerned about him. He, he had women in loincloths in the garden scene. The many wives of Adam. Uh, and yes, we've been kept from that knowledge. <laughs> and he had made a comment saying, uh, Mormons are too prudes too much of a prude to allow me to do what I want and have them naked. <laughs> Which, as a guy, that would be awesome. <laughs> I understand women would be terrified. <laughs> but, uh, Brigham Young's far worse in his depravity, sexual depravity, and inhumane depravity but this is what Nelson is outwardly confessing he's confessing to his crimes confessing that he's leading Mormons to their doom to be enslaved by the church of Lucifer and uses this viral pandemic to brainwash Mormons into thinking, oh, there's nothing we can do. Their government's responsible for taking away our agency to attend church. We must attend church. It's our right, religious right, to assemble, gather together, and worship God. Again, Mormons, you've been led away from the teachings of the Book of Mormon. Nelson and the Twelve Apostles, plus the two counselors, so fifteen of them, have taken you away from the Book of Mormon. Because all of you know, if I say the word Zoramite, you remember in your mind the story. Oh yeah, what, the Ramiumptum thing, wasn't it? Yeah! The poor Zoramites were the ones who built it. But because they were now unemployed, they were banned because of their poverty from worshiping in the temple they themselves built. And here you have Nelson having Mormons be in the funding of the church to build the church only to deny them as he has taken away the high priesthood the high priest group section 76 of the Doctrine and Covenants as well as many other scriptures make it very clear you can't be exalted in the highest degree of the Mormon kingdom in the afterlife without being a high priest. It's essential to be in the presence of God face to face. So yes, the first vision was not the first vision. It was a dream. It was a coded message technically but we're not getting into that but that's the whole point 
is that this was supposed to be the bicentennial year not just the conference session with the one session that took away the priesthood meeting. It was supposed to be the whole year talking about the first vision. They had it all planned out, ready to go. All sorts of stuff for the whole year. Oops. Mormons, I guess, forgot. He forgot. This is what brainwashing does. It creates a dichotomous and even non-dichotomous categorization system that gaslights you from the reality of what caused the problem. The problems. So that you then accept the conditions and letting the causation continue to exist. Not holding the causation responsible. Not going to find the causation. Just like psychology. And thus create a new normal. That, oh, I guess coronavirus is our life now. There's nothing we can do about it. We just have to hope that one day we'll have a vaccine. Isn't it interesting that, that Trump was able to be cured? Really? How did he get cured without a vaccine? Oh, it must have been his, his, his uh, 12 doctors. It must have been that drug that he's financially invested in. Even the news has brainwashed us into thinking that, you know, Trump was helped by the doctors. That we, the regular people, aren't able to get that kind of health care that Trump got to be cured of the coronavirus. No. We've all been distracted and diverted from the cause. Trump knew about it in the beginning. Trump's a germaphobe. Remember all those instances of accusations of, of suspicious activity? Remember the South Korean religious fundamental Christian group that was there at the center and then took off on planes to spread the virus? from South Korea. Remember them? I remember them. I did a video on it when the news came out. And yet nobody in the news is now talking about the origin of coronavirus. They have normalized coronavirus and refused to find out who was responsible. They're not even holding Trump responsible much anymore because it's gone on for so long. Mormons likewise. Nelson did his part for Mormons. And all Mormons don't hold Nelson responsible. Even as a medical doctor who spoke to China and knew of its seriousness. And yet, like Governor Herbert, like Trump, they were slow to shut down the church. Because Governor Herbert refused to take proper precautions for the first case that came to Utah. And all subsequent cases that were able to penetrate Utah just by merely coming to Utah from outside, having the virus. And then Herbert allowed it to spread. Rather than taking the proper protocols and procedures that 
he himself set up and prepared for. Our governor-elect Cox was placed in charge of it. And they failed to follow their own preparations. And I've been screaming at you this whole time about what they are doing and what they are going to do and what they then did, as I predicted. This is all part of the brainwashing system. They don't, t they, they appear to be prepared, but then minimize it. Allow it to grow and fester. And then are slow to respond. And then they shut things down. But they didn't help the people with sanitation and food and other necessities during that time period of shutdown. So people suffered without toilet paper or other food and other necessities. People's credit tanked because credit cards had to be maxed out. Rental conditions were now in jeopardy. Other financial bills are now in jeopardy as people want their money but yet people can't go to work. They've been laid off. And then Herbert then says Okay, if you're going to complain, I'm opening up. But he says, under the conditions that we stick below 200 new cases per day. Well, no, that's not how you do it. You're supposed to be green before you open. And so, by the pleadings of the suffering of Utahns, Herbert then opened. And the church then, oh, it's okay for us to open now too. And so Nelson opened up church again, opened up the temples, sent missionaries back out on missions. Missionaries died one particular sister missionary who on her P-Day was hiking in the mountains of Switzerland and fell to her death because Nelson sent her back out on the mission She's from Utah during a viral pandemic as the cases were rising now Nelson sent her back out on her mission he is now guilty of murder not just the murders from the coronavirus response or lack thereof <coughs> and of course they open up their businesses all the while saying oh it's Herbert as Mormons don't make the connection to the church's statement that, oh we're not going to open unless the leaders open we're going to follow the leaders. Well, what do you think if Mormons are leaders in government? How do you think that makes them feel? Oh, crap, our church is dependent on us in order to open up again. Yeah. They've been extorted. They've been threatened. Open up so that the church can open up. So, Herbert... And the local leaders did so. And then school time. As they've been gaslighting us, saying, oh no, kids won't get infected. No, nah, it will be fine. Send them to school. Yeah, it became a bloodbath. Thus, the new normal was created 
as everybody forgets the accountability, the causation of Nelson. He created a new normal. He succeeded in brainwashing. And he's using a virus to now control people. By getting everybody infected, everybody will then become dependent on a vaccine for their lives. This is the horrors of the Church of Satan. This is why I'm an LDS critic. At first, I didn't know about any of this connection. I had to actually do my research into church history. But the church had attacked me as a faithful, devoted Mormon, all because I came to the church and said, hey, I deciphered Paleo-Hebrew. Joseph Smith is a translator. Isn't that awesome? Apparently not. Because this final picture I'll show you is my troublemaker file. 36434. And you will see that I'm a troublemaker to the church because of my translation work. Deciphering Paleo-Hebrew. I would eventually go on to decipher Egyptian picture glyphs. So yes, Joseph Smith is the translator of the Book of Abraham. And Egyptologists don't know it because they don't translate the picture glyphs. They don't even know to know that that's supposed to be done too. None of the characters in picture glyphs, unless they are in text, are put in a sign list because they just they don't see it as actual language in a picture form Chinese have been doing it this whole time what do you think all those various lines are each one is a different character all combined together into one picture cliff creating their vocabulary. And so the church turned on me, creating, turning me into their enemy, and thus a follower of Lucifer, because I said Joseph Smith was a translator. Because they are the true church of the Lamb not Joseph. They've come out with the Gospel Topics essay, Translation and Historicity of the Book of Abraham, which was a response to me all the way back from 1998, as you will see on this final picture. Because they needed Mormons to have some other excuse to deny Joseph Smith as a translator. And it's horrifying. Because they're not only attempting to try to gaslight me, but then deceive Mormons at the same time. LDS file on me. There you go. And so, this whole process that they've set us up for is for our destruction to enslave us <coughs> to control us and they're using this virus just like they did in 1984 to cause an isolated society who can't escape it to find out the truth 
that there is no other society that's attacking them that they're at war with. That's all wagging the dog. Wagging the tail. Wag the dog, isn't it? <clears throat> the New World Order of the Illuminati. Albert Pike told us exactly what he was going to do in his letter to Giuseppe Mazzini. They will crush the faith of Christians by causing the end of the world, according to Revelation and all the other revelations of the Bible. But then no Jesus is going to appear because they know Constantine created him. It doesn't exist. If a mortal man created a being that cannot be comprehended by mortal men, yeah, they were pretty confident that there is going to be no Jesus coming from heaven. <laughs> I saw a movie the other day. might have been over the weekend. Uh, it was from 2013 or something like that. Uh, Rapture Palooza. <laughs> the guy is gets a hold of a laser beam gun created by a demon creature. I don't know if it was Lucifer, but but regardless, he's he zaps it and it kills Jesus. <laughs> then Heavenly Father and this demon Lucifer or whatever battle it out and they both die and get electrocuted in the pool and they make their the couple make their snide comments about philosophical arguments of is he really God if he's able to die? <laughs> it's just hilarious. <laughs> but yeah, Jesus and the horse riding in the heavens, zapped and dead. <laughs> But that was their plan, to just utterly destroy the faith of Christians. And you can't just live in denial, having been brainwashed. Because Mormons also believe this, that Jesus is going to come from the heavens. They're talking about signs in the heavens, guys. <laughs> he doesn't literally come from the heavens. Because Mormons are pre-captivity Jew which is Israelite which is Egyptian not Semitic not Babylonian Mesopotamia we're supposed to come out of Babylon I've been wanting to do that looks like I filed it away or, yeah, well, no it's going to be around here somewhere oh there it is it's on the printer a pile of other videos, ideas. <clears throat> but that's what their whole intention is. And then once you've destroyed religious belief, that it is a failed belief system, and it's just totally fake, then they come out and with their science, having been science deniers this whole time, egging on religious folk who are science deniers. And they'll come out and say, no, you need to embrace science. You have been deceived by your religion. And so here's the new order for you to follow. And it will be the doctrine of Lucifer. The church all of a sudden is going to embrace science when they want it and deny science when it doesn't suit their purpose. That's brainwashing. That's creating a new normal. That's the psychological gaslighting of pseudoscience. Extraordinaire. So, this already has gone on to an hour. But I hope you've learned not to be gaslighted by the church anymore. Don't distract 
get distracted by the fact that they have the signs of Lucifer carved in stone on the keystone of the arch of the door of the temple and on this eagle gate I almost said seagull again <laughs> which was created for Brigham Young's Ponderosa as it's called a homestead and that one's in bronze now don't let them deceive you don't get fooled by the name tag of Jesus Christ in the center of the name because the sign is Lucifer's stick to the causation don't be distracted by their outward appearance and their outward claims they've been telling us what their plans are but if you're brainwashed you're gonna miss it and ex-mormons also are brainwashed because John DeLynn I've told you he thinks he could go back to church certain things would have to change uh, yeah like removing all things Lucifer how about that but uh, they've fallen for the church's lies about Joseph Smith it was Brigham Young who altered documentation and lied and then covered it up the church covered it up so what the church historians are uncovering is that the church covered up the lies and the altered documents of Brigham Young and they claim that oh well these documents show Joseph Smith was evil <laughs> the church was trying to cover this up <laughs> no church was covering up Brigham Young and Brigham Young framed Joseph but yet ex-Mormons believe the frame by Brigham Young because of the distraction of the cover-up of Brigham Young uh, and so yeah you got all these ex-Mormons who are battling out in this dichotomous content conflict with Mormons Joseph Smith was a rapist of a 14 year old girl he's a prophet of God uh, you're evil for saying Joseph was a rapist whatever God ordains God allows Yes, there's a lot more to the story. Don't get brainwashed. Don't fall for their new normal for you. Don't follow their covenant path of hinge pointing away from the iron rod and the tree of life, which is truth. Sound scientific-based truth